Now there's a couple other ways you can also add guides, which I use less often. One is to do guides by pixels instead of by percent. So if we go to guides and new guide here, instead of new guide by percent, you'll see the position. So this is measured in pixels. And you can kind of get a sense of your pixels by looking at the rulers on the top of this main section or on the left side of the main section point. So if you go from zero pixels from left to right, uh, the zero pixel point is the leftmost side of our document. And you could go 250 pixels over, which would put you here. So using the ruler as a reference, you can get an idea of where those guides are going to be positioned. Also, if you know the image size of your document, then you could use simple math like division on it to figure out to figure out the different points like how many pixels would it take to be 25 percent of the distance across the document obviously using percentages is going to be easier for that because you don't have to calculate it yourself so adding in a pixel selection is going to be more useful when you want it a very specific amount of pixels and not a percentage of the document so if i put 20 in here for horizontal that's going to mean it's going to be 20 pixels from the top down so let's go ahead and hit OK here and we can see our guideline is right here. We can zoom in really far and we can see that the ruler is going to show the line at 20 pixels if we zoom in far enough. So you see that little 20 right there. So if you've ever used Microsoft Word and you needed to set up page margins, you might have done that by inches or centimeters. So this is similar to that, except you're measuring the distance in pixels. OK, now another potentially very useful way of creating guides is to do new guides from selection. So this will actually give you four guides regardless of what your selection is. Because when you have a selection like an entire layer, then there's going to be a top left corner, a bottom left corner, a bottom right corner and a top right corner. This also applies if your selection isn't a perfect box. So for instance, I can use this window here and you can see that the window is slanted on our document. It has a bit of perspective there. So we could use the fuzzy selection tool on this white color. I'll go ahead and left click on it and you'll see that the selection in this preview in the top right but also on our main uh, image area shows the window being selected rather well. So there is going to be a top left point, a bottom left point, a uh, bottom right point and a top right point for this selection. And the bottom left point is going to end up being aligned with the bottom over here. So when we actually add our guides, it's going to create four guides and they should intersect right around down here. So even if your selection is in a perfect box, the guides will form a perfect box. Probably easier to just show what I mean instead of keep talking about it. So let's go to image guides and then new guide from selection. So all you need to do is have a selection somewhere on your document, either a layer or if you selected an area like we just did with the fuzzy select tool and we'll get the guides to intersect at the top left point, the bottom left point, the bottom right point, and the top right point for our selection. So this is gonna be really handy when we wanna position other elements with respect to where this position is at. So we have a ton of guides now. It probably would be appropriate to start showing some snapping. So let's create a small text box. I'm going to use the text tool and we'll type in here. So for this text box, there's a top left point, there's a bottom left point, a bottom right point, a top right point, but there's also going to be a middle point. So if I click up here to go to the move tool, we can move this layer around. So text layer is no different than any other layer when it comes to this. If you left click on the layer, you're going to be able to move it around where you want it to go. So if you look really closely at the center though, there's always going to be a little cross so you can use the center cross as a snapping point as well. The other points for snapping are going to be the top, the left, the right, and the bottom of the text box. So I can align this text box up against this guide really easily by left clicking on it, moving it, and then getting it close to this guide. So you'll see when I get close to that guide, it just snaps right to it. So by doing that, our text layer is now perfectly aligned to this guide, which is at 25% of the width of the document. So if I wanted it to be positioned there, that's how you can do it precisely. So you don't have to guess the position of your items anymore, especially if you're doing something like graphic design or web design, this is gonna be really handy because you wanna make everything pixel perfect in that case. So let's show off uh, snapping to the little center cross there. So if I bring it down here to this line, you'll see the snapping works the same way we can snap to that center cross. Now we can also snap to an intersection at the same time. So you see how these two guides, one vertical and one horizontal, meet 
at this pixel right here. So if we bring this over with the move tool, we can just snap to both of those at the same time. So if you needed it to be at a precise pixel point, like let's say 100 pixels to the right and 100 pixels down, then having a vertical guide at 100 pixels from the left and a horizontal guide 100 pixels down from the top would allow you to get to that pixel perfect point every single time you need it. Now, during the course of this brief tutorial, you've probably seen these lines turn red when I hover over them. Uh, that indicates that you can actually move the guides. So if you left click on a guide that is highlighted as red, you can move its position up or down. So if you look at the bottom area of the screen though, you can see the position where the guide is moving to and you can also see the number of pixels that we've moved the guide. But what you'll notice about it is that it can go up in one pixel increments. So it may be hard to get it moved to the exact position you want to. So if I wanted to have a guide at 250 instead of 100, what I would probably do is remove the 100 pixel guide and then to add a new guide, type in the number 250 pixels instead of trying to manually move it. Because um, this can be a little bit fussy. If it goes in one pixel increments, it's a little hard to move it exactly where you want to. So for instance, let's say we wanted to move it to this 425 pixels, but I didn't want to try to move it up or down like this to get it exactly right. What I would probably do is remove this guide. So how you remove a singular guide is you left click on it and you move it outside of the bounds of your image document. So as soon as you get above the top here or the bottom or the left or the right, if you're talking about a vertical line, uh, it'll show remove guide at the bottom. So if you let go of left click here, then it disappears. So really easy to do that. And now we can just go to image guides, new guide, type in 425. And let's see, this was a horizontal guide. So we do want to leave it as horizontal. And now we have it at this pixel perfect point. And then we don't need to worry about making it manually adjusted in any way. So a couple more quick things. One, if you do move a guide by accident by left clicking on it, dragging it to a new position and letting go, you can still undo that position change with control Z like you could any other change. Also, if it was several changes ago, you can always go to Windows Dockable Dialogs and then do undo history and find that point in time where you moved the guide. So you see this move guide here. You can just go one step above that and it will undo the move of the guide. Now, if you decide at any point you want to get rid of all of these guides, you can go up to image guides and remove all guides. And then one more trick worth mentioning is that you can actually slice your image into multiple new image documents that you can work from uh, using slice using guides. So let's actually add in a couple guides here. I'll just slice it down the middle vertically and horizontally here. So a new 50% vertical guide and a new 50% horizontal guide. So now if we use slice using guides, what's going to happen is that this document will be broken up into four new ones. So if I go to image slice using guides, you'll see that we get four new images. So that might be a little bit more useful if you were wanting to do something like extract one piece of your document. So if you use the selection tools to grab what you want, you could go to new guides and then new guides from selection and then if you wanted to get this as one separate image document, you could always go up to image and then slice using guides. And then one of those documents is going to have that window or the frame of the window from the selection. Now, you could also just kind of do that with the rectangular select and then grabbing what you want, cutting it away, bringing it into a new document and then just pasting it in. But one of the advantages of using the guides is, of course, it's going to be pixel perfect precise every time if you set it up right. So that in a nutshell is most of what there is to know about using guides inside of GIMP. So that's going to conclude my guide to guides. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future video content.